All right, let's get right into it. We left it in an intense spot in our story. Out in the backyard, Ramona found Beezus panting as she wrestled with the shovel. Let me try, she offered, but soon discovered the shovel was too long and unwieldy, unwieldy for her to manage. I'll get a trowel, she said. Together, the girls worked, Ramona on her knees, digging with the trowel, and finally with her hands, until they had dug a small grave, just right for a cat. Beezus, will you put Picky Picky in the box? asked Ramona. I'm not exactly scared. I just don't want to. Back in the basement, Beezus lifted Picky Picky into his cardboard coffin and laid his head on the pillow. Ramona tucked the second doll blanket around him, and together they set the lid in place. Beezus carried the box out to the gravesite. It doesn't seem right just to bury him, she said, and I don't remember much about Grandma Day's funeral, except everyone whispered. There were lots of flowers, and I had to sit very still. You were just a baby then. Ramona knew about funerals. Oh, on TV, when they bury someone, they stand around the grave and pray, she said. Then the wife of the dead person cries until someone leads her away. I suppose we should pray. Bisa sounded so uncertain as to the proper way to pray for a cat. Ramona had no doubts. She bowed her head and began. Now I lay me down to sleep. That's not right, said Bezos. You're not the one who's being buried. Oh, okay, Ramona began again. Now we lay Picky Picky down to sleep. We pray thee, Lord, his soul to keep. Thy love stay with him through the night and wake him with the morning light. Amen. When she finished the prayer, she said, There. Jesus frowned in thought. But he won't wake with the morning light. He isn't supposed to. He's dead. Ramona was not worried. Well, they say cats have nine lives, so maybe tomorrow he will wake up someplace as somebody's kitten and start a new life. I hadn't thought of that. I don't think it's true, but it does make me feel better, said Jesus. I hope his new owners give him melon rind. Picky Picky loved melon rind. She picked up the shovel and began to fill the grave. We should have some flowers for him, but there aren't any. I wonder which of his lives we got him on, said Ramona, as she gathered damp brown leaves to strew on the grave. The girls looked sadly at the little mound left by Picky Picky's coffin. He was a good cat, said Ramona even if he didn't like me much when I was little. I can barely remember when he was a tiny little kitten who climbed the curtain, said Beezus. I'll make him a tombstone. After sharing the sad experience, Ramona felt closer to her sister, close enough to speak of something other than their cat. Beezus, she said with a gulp, I'm sorry about yesterday when I called you you know, and I didn't mean it the way you took it. She explained how she happened to change pie face to pizza face. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, and I promise I won't ever say it again, no matter how mad I get. That's okay, said Beezus with a big sigh. I shouldn't have been so cross with you. Mom says I'll outgrow skin problems, but it just seems like forever. <sighs> Now maybe I better go put something on these blisters on my hands. In spite of the funeral, Ramona felt light and happy. She and her sister had both apologized and forgiven one another. And we didn't worry mother, Ramona pointed out as she skipped off to the basement to find a short board in a pile of scrap lumber. By the time Beezus had changed out of her muddy clothes, scrubbed her hands, applied disinfectant, and covered her blisters with band-aids. The grave bore a marker made from a scrap of board. Printed in crayon were the words, Picky Picky Quimby, age 10 years, a good cat. Okay, 
See you next time.